All right, so this is our next ECO1 set of notes. This is B12C, and you need to take a minute to set up your page. This is remote bio, or this is the makeup work if you missed a day. We're in unit two. This is ecology one. And what we're doing today is we're doing B12C. And we're doing part of it. We're not going to do the whole entire thing just yet because it's got, it's got uh, quite a bit of detail to it. So this is analyze the flow of energy. Oh, sorry. Analyze the flow of matter and energy. And whenever you see the word energy, in a science class, it's usually abbreviated as a capital E. And so you're going to analyze the flow of matter and energy through something called trophic levels, which sounds horrible, but you guys have done this before, through trophic levels using various models. including, okay, here we go, you know these, food chains, you guys know how to draw food chains, food webs, that just includes a lot more organisms and is, real, is more realistic, and ecological pyramids, which I think you should be familiar with too. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start off with the stuff that I think you're not as familiar with because I really think you understand already about food chains. Food chains just start, show a simple who eats what, and the arrow always points to the eater. So when you have a food chain, and I'm going to give you one example here. Let's say we start off with grass, and the cow eats the grass, and then human eats the cow. Really simple, right? So the arrow points to where the matter is going. It also points to where the food. So energy is going this way, and matter is going this way. I mean, really, the cow is eating the grass. You can see that the atoms are going into the cow here. So we have a typical standard food chain. When we have a food web, we add more things to it, like, oh, well, what else can eat a cow? Well, if we get a coyote that's really lucky, maybe it's going to eat uh, a calf, a young one. What else eats the grass? Well, grasshoppers do. But coyotes will also eat grasshoppers. That's what happens in real life. They eat lots of insects. So now what we have is something more realistic, and it involves multiple organisms. So if we just look at one, we have the food chain. It always points to the direction that the energy matter are going. When we look at the other, we have a food web. So let's focus on ecological pyramids, because I think this is a little bit more complex. And maybe it's something that you don't have as much information about. Ecological pyramids. Um, what we talk about when we, do with the, when we deal with this is trophic levels. So I'm going to draw an ecological pyramid, and I'm going to leave myself, let's see, two, four, six, eight. Let's go for six pieces here. So two, four, six, eight. So I'm going to draw it right down here. Here's my first step in my ecological pyramid. And then I'm going to go up some. I'm going to go in quite a bit. And here's my second step in my ecological pyramid. Here's my third step in my ecological pyramid. And here's my fourth step in my ecological pyramid. And once we have that, we're going to go through and we're going to look at these. So here's one, here's two, here's three, and the last one is four. Okay, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to get a different different kind of pen here to, to write on this. So when I say one, two, three, or four, that is called the trophic level. What trophic level are we on? Trophic refers to food level. 
So this is the fourth trophic level. If I'm talking about this one, it's the second trophic level. All right? So that's what trophic levels are referring to. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Oh, moved it the wrong way. All right. So let's start down here at the very bottom. And I'm going to start with, uh, let's use a green since we're going to be talking about producers. The first trophic level is always producers. And the reason it's always producers is because we have to ultimately get the energy from somewhere. And these are the only organisms that can use or harness energy from the sun. And that's how they make their food. These are also, excuse me, also called autotroph autotrophs. So if we translate that, auto means self, and troph, we already said, means food. So self-food. They can make their own food. So they make their own food through photosynthesis. I'm going to abbreviate photosynthesis as photosyn. I think you guys can get this. Examples of these, plants, algae, mosses, any, any of the green things like that that you think of. Some protists, not all of them, but some protists. Some bacteria, cyanobacteria, can make their own food. They, they can have chloroplasts in them. So these are examples of this. This is where you have 100% of the energy. Now, the next thing up, the next level up, would be the primary consumer. And the primary consumer eats the producer. So the second step up here, we have primary consumer. Notice how the whole level is smaller than the other one, because when you transfer energy from the producer to the primary consumer, a lot of energy is lost in the form of heat. We just can't take it all in. Think about the fact that the cow has a body temperature. So all that energy that it's eating from the grass, a lot of that energy is going to produce that, that temperature, that heat. And so it's not energy that's harnessed into being reproductive energy or anything like that. This is the primary consumer. These guys are heterotrophs. They can't make their own food. Heterotrophs can't. They have to eat it. I'm going to go outside my line here. So they have to intake a food. So it's a primary consumer. They intake food. They can't make it using sunlight. They have to intake that food. These guys, in many cases, are going to be able to eat it. Now, if it's just this one that only eats plants, then it's going to be what type of eater? It's going to be an herbivore, right? Right. So if they're primary consumers, these are all going to be herbivores. So I'm going to put herbivore over here. I think you guys already know that word. So I'm going to put it in there. They're plant eaters. They eat the plants here. Now, some of them can also be omnivores, where they eat plants and other things. Like, think about bears. Not only do they eat plants and grasses, um, they also eat insects, they also eat other organisms, you know, if they catch a moose, they're going to eat that too. So you have other things that can do that too. The next one up here, um, let's use red. The next one up here, the third, is called a secondary consumer. So these are producers. Here are primary consumers. These are secondary consumers. Consumer, again, means that it can't make its own food. It's got to consume it. So these are secondary consumers. These are carnivores, usually. And you guys know carnivores are eating meat. In this case, they're typically going to be carnivores. Some of them can still be omnivores. Think about your bears and stuff. They can be both of those. So, But a lot of times we think carnivores, and you guys know, I'm not going to write this in, but you guys know that they're going to be um, they're going to be meat eaters. And then the last layer up there, the last layer is called a tertiary. Tertiary means um, secondary. This is primary one, two, three. Tertiary consumer. These, again, are mostly 
carnivores, but not always. So what I want to point out here is I'm going to go back and I'm going to point out the numbers. Here's where 100% of the energy is. As you go from the first trophic level for the second to the second trophic level, only 10% of that energy is present to be passed on to the next one. So this guy ate 100% of it, but the only thing that they can pass on to the next trophic level is 10% of what they ate. So 90% of the energy that they ate is not going to be something that they can pass on or give to the next predator. Here, we only have 1% of the energy. So out of all the 10% that they ate, only 1% is available to be passed on to the next level up. Here, we have 0.1%. So we could have more than one tertiary consumer. We could have another one up here even, couldn't we? Quaternary, so here's primaries one, secondaries two, tertiaries three, quaternary is four. So we could continue on up. But notice you lose, you only retain 10% of whatever you started with each time. So 10% it, it, is what's available to pass on to the next thing. And that continues to be that way from there on out. So here we have the amount of energy available to go up to the next trophic level. It doesn't mean that they didn't use that energy. It means that it's not in the body. A lot of that 90% of the energy is used in moving, is used in giving off of heat, maintaining body temperature, things like that. Okay, so everything though, no matter what, solar energy, sun, solar energy drives it all. And I'm going to write this over here again, just so I'm going to reiterate it, say it again so you pay attention here. The amount of energy, amount of energy transferred from one trophic level to another each time is 10% of what's available. So they took in 100% of whatever was there, but by the time they've used up a lot of it, only 10%, if somebody eats whatever's here, let's say this was the grasshopper eating that, it ate all of that that it could, and it's of 100% of what it took in, only 10% is what this organism's going to get when it eats it. So if this organism had eaten this straight ahead, it would have gotten a lot more energy. But there's this in-between. This organism, this carnivore, can't get its energy through eating grass. So it's got to eat this guy. So you lose that type of that amount of energy. So I'm going to stop right there, and we'll do the rest of this in the next note section.